for joining us on To Your Health with TGMC. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred, and on this episode, we will be talking with Dr. Nathan Patrick. Dr. Patrick will be discussing common orthopedic conditions concerning hand and upper extremities. Hand, wrist, and elbow injuries are common and can cause pain, dysfunction, and make everyday normal activities difficult. But these conditions can be treated. So here tonight to talk more about common treatments for wrist and hand pain is orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Nathan Patrick. Welcome to the show, Dr. Patrick. Hi, thanks Rhonda, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you have been working very hard lately. Been so getting busy already. <laughs> appreciate that. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and your new role at Gulf Coast Orthopedics. So I'm originally actually from Ohio, and my uh, wife fortunately was lucky enough to do an undergrad at Tulane. Um, so she's the one that kind of brought us down here back to uh, the South Louisiana area. Um, did most of my training in Pennsylvania at Penn State, and then subsequently did two upper extremity fellowships at Pittsburgh and then University of Rochester in New York. Wow, some very prestigious schools there. Yeah. We're so happy to have you here. Thank so you. how is the transition going from Ohio to South Louisiana. Transition has been easy, except for today. The, the weather is very similar to the north, but uh, but usually it's uh, you know very very nice uh, to to walk outside and it's like 80 degree weather pretty much all the time. Except for like you know beginning of the summer, then it's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, you had a, a little bit of getting used to that, I'm sure. But. but but otherwise everything's been really really nice. The transition to Gulf Coast has been amazing, um, and then everybody that I've met's been you know extremely extremely nice. So. Well, good. That's two things we're famous for, being <laughs> nice people and having great food. So I'm hoping you're getting to eat some of that, too. Definitely. <laughs> well, good. Well, let's talk about your specialty and um, why did you choose hand and upper extremity as your specialty? That's a good question. So um, in, in residency, I always found that hand and upper extremity, hand in particular, um, was very difficult and quite complex. I think I gravitated to the fact that it wasn't something that was easily picked up by, uh, you know, an orthopedic resident or a plastic resident for that matter. Um, so I felt that, you know, after my training in, in residency, something that could not only make me a better orthopedic surgeon, but also make me somewhat unique uh, was to do a hand fellowship. So you kind of gravitated towards that. I did, that. yeah. And a lot, you know, it's, it's the thing in orthopedics that a lot of the hands, or a lot of the orthopedic surgeons kind of some will shy away from because it can be pretty complicated and then, you know, the need to do microsurgery and such. Mm -hmm. Well, hands are pretty important. They help us do a lot of things, so sure. people need their hands. So what are some of the most common orthopedic conditions that you see in your office on a regular basis? So probably the three most common things that I see are carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, trigger finger, uh, and finally, um, decor veins tenosynovitis, which basically is a, a tendonitis or tendinopathy uh, of one of your, uh, or a couple of your wrist tendons. Um, and those are probably my three most common surgeries that I perform uh, on a routine basis. Okay, well let's talk about each one of those. So carpal tunnel, how, what causes it and how is it treated? So like a lot of things in orthopedics, we, we don't always know why people get it, we just know what causes it in terms of how can we make it better. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, when you think about your hand, you have uh, all of the flexors to your fingers as well as the nerve called the median nerve uh, go through a small contained space. Uh, and at times that space can uh, become smaller and the only thing that's gonna really get compressed is your nerve. So in terms of treatment, we uh, tend to uh, you know, at least attempt to do conservative management, and that usually consists of nighttime bracing or splinting, uh, plus or minus a steroid injection into the carpal tunnel. That being said, uh, the kind of the tried and true treatment has been a carpal tunnel release. Um, and I'm kind of, uh, I guess, on the newer age of treatment for this in terms of how you treat it. Um, so one of the ways you can treat it nowadays uh, is through uh, an endoscope, so doing it uh, endoscopically. The reason why I like to do that is um, for two reasons. So one, it keeps your incision out of your palm, uh, which a lot of patients don't like, particularly my manual labors. Uh, and the, the second reason is I, I tend to see that patients do recover uh, a little bit quicker and return to work is a little bit sooner. Um, at about three months, whether or not you made a big incision or a small incision, you're about the same. Uh, but I think patients in general like to feel better quicker if they can. 
For sure. No, everyone likes to get back to doing what they love to do. Where is the carpal tunnel? Like, is it somewhere on so your the, hand? Yeah, the, so the carpal tunnel is on the uh, palmar side or the palm side of your hand. And if you okay. feel uh, the bone here on the ulnar side, this is your ulnar side of your wrist, it's called the pisiform. And then if you feel that other bump, uh, that would be your scaphoid. In between those two bones, uh, that's where your carpal tunnel is located. Oh, well, thank you. I didn't know <laughs> that. You're welcome. So trigger finger, what is that and how is it treated and maybe some of the causes? Yeah, so, so trigger finger is um, similar in a way to uh, carpal tunnel in that it's secondary to uh, uh, you know, a, a compressive uh, state. So the tendon itself, uh, once it reaches about this area in your palm, uh, right where your knuckle joint's at, um, it enters in, into a tunnel. And that tunnel can sometimes be too tight or you can have some swelling of your, uh, your tendon and a nodule can form, and it won't allow that tendon to glide through. Uh, in general, I would say about 70% of patients get better with one or two steroid injections into that area. However, there's a subset of people that obviously don't get better, uh, at which point a uh, trigger finger release, where you really vent a portion of that tunnel open, uh, does provide fairly long-lasting relief. That's good. So there is relief in sight for people that have Definitely. That. I actually have trigger finger on both my index fingers right now. So I and injected how do you myself get that? yesterday. You, you <laughs> injected yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that could be dangerous. But they're, they're actually much better already. So. Oh, well, yeah. good. Well, tennis elbow, that's another thing you treat. So tell us a little bit about that. I do. So, so tennis elbow is, uh, again, a tendinopathy. Um, and it's related to uh, one particular wrist extensor called your ECRB. Um, and that attaches really to the base of your, if you look at your middle finger, the base of your metacarpal. So right in this area here. And its, mm -hmm. its primary function is to allow for uh, dorsiflexion uh, of your hand or wrist extension. Um, and that gets irritated up here on the outside of your elbow. And you can get little micro tears or what I call longitudinal tears in line with that tendon. So instead of you know, taking a tendon and cutting it and it splits into two, well, this one, the, the tear can be in line with the pull of that muscle or tendon. In general, um, I rarely operate on this, um, and I also rarely inject it. Uh, so the treatment for this that's been shown in literature to be the most effective is actually stretching. Um, and in most cases, uh, although it, your symptoms can last up to a year, they resolve on their own with stretching. Um, so thus far, at least at, uh, in South Louisiana, I haven't performed any procedures for this, um, but I've had several patients get better with, with just stretching. That's a pretty easy fix then. It is, yeah. So yeah, the next question was going to be, do you usually treat the three things you mentioned with surgery or without? And yeah, and it really depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really depends. So, so I try to do everything I can to um, have the patient be treated conservatively without surgery because myself, I wouldn't want surgery if I didn't need it. So I feel yeah. like the patients would want the same thing. I think you're definitely right about that. So do you treat arthritis? And if so, how? I do. And that's a complicated question because there's so many tiny little bones in the hand and wrists. Um, but the most common area for symptomatic arthritis in the hand is actually the base of the thumb. So we refer to, refer to that as basal joint arthritis or thumb CMC arthritis. Um, most commonly, uh, you know, patients will complain of or, uh, opening jars. They have difficulty. They feel, you know, difficulty with turning keys. And the pain is really, they'll say wrist pain, but when you examine them, uh, they'll have a little bit of swelling at the base of that yeah, metacarpal sure of your thumb. So uh, I, treatment initially starts out with, a se with several things. Um, steroid injections can be effective. Uh, splinting can be effective. And actually, if you strengthen up what I call the thenar cone muscles, these muscles here, you can actually offload that joint as well. Hmm. If all else fails, um, uh, I guess the quickest way to, to describe the surgery is you really take out the arthritis and you do something to suspend the thumb uh, to keep it out to its regular length so it doesn't sink down once you take that arthritis out. Okay, so there's, there's hope for people with arthritis in their course, hand as yeah. well. It's a very successful surgery. And actually, Good uh, one of the surgeries was actually invented where I trained in Rochester. So. Oh, so you're a pioneer in yeah. <laughs> one of those surgeries. I was with some pioneers, I guess. Well, that's, one, that's wonderful. Um, so what is your favorite thing to treat? 
So I guess my, my, one of my favorite surgeries is, is the basal joint arthritis surgery, uh, what I call a CMC, arthroplasty with suspension plasty. And it's a jumble of words, but really what we do is we take out one of the little pebble bones in the thumb, the base of the thumb, and then I reroute a tendon uh, to keep it suspended out. And the reason why I like it is because in general, patients do very, very well and they're very, very happy. Uh, the problem is it takes about six weeks to three months before they are like, I should have made this decision earlier. Because it, there is a period of time where you're recovering and healing, which you're like, I don't know if I should have did this. Uh, but I would say more often than not, um, people are very, generally very, very happy. So it's not instant gratification, but it's not, it gets no, it's there. It's a little bit of a late gratification. Um, and I do enjoy the complex stuff. It's just you, you want to mix a, a little bit of the routine with the complex. If you're all complex, you get burned out a little bit. But um, you know, I did a scaphoid non-union uh, this morning, so one of the other bones on the wrist. And I actually did a, a vascular graft, so um, you know, taking a vascular piece of bone and implanting it in that bone uh, so it heals. Very intricate procedures, these sound like. <laughs> <laughs> Good fun. Well, with everyone using their smartphone so much, do you see any patients having issues from being on their smartphone? Uh, I actually am seeing carpal tunnel and something called cubital tunnel a little bit more often. So cubital tunnel is, uh, again, the same concept of a compression on a nerve, but it happens because patients will continuously have their elbow flexed mm -hmm. for long periods of time. And, and in that case, your small and your ring finger uh, will get numb and like... tingly. Um, and then I do uh, also see carpal tunnel occurring more often now in, in younger patients when usually it was you know, reserved for... You know, more of the 40, 50 year old or older patients. Um, so, yeah. So, stay off your smartphone. I guess that's if easier said than done. Exactly. 24 7 at least. You shouldn't be on it. Yeah, but if you notice your hands are getting numb, it's probably because of your positioning. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, just reposition, think about what you're doing that's you're doing too much. And usually, if you, if you rest that, uh, your symptoms will improve. Okay, that's good advice. So, do you have any home remedies that you could tell us? For people to try before they come to your office, maybe. Um, so, uh, in terms of our, you know pain in general, um, you know, over-the-counter Tylenol and ibuprofen taken together uh, has actually shown to be more effective than when they're taken independently. Um, so, taking two Tylenol, two ibuprofen around the clock for six hours. Now, now, when you're trying to get the, you know, the anti-inflammatory effect of something like ibuprofen or Motrin, for instance, you do have to take it routinely for a week or two before you're going to get that anti-inflammatory effect. In the beginning, it does provide some relief for pain, but if you believe or think that your, your symptoms are secondary to inflammation, then they're not really addressing the inflammation. Um, so in, in terms of things you can do on your own, that would be the, you know, the first recommendation. Okay, that's a good one. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We, that's you. all the time we have. So, um, again, thank you. We're happy to have you here in South Louisiana, and um, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much, Ron. I appreciate it. To schedule an appointment with Dr. Patrick, call 868-1540 or visit golfcoastorthopedics.com. As we learn from Dr. Patrick, hand and wrist pain can happen for many reasons, from accidents to conditions that are ongoing. The good news is they can be treated to reduce pain and improve quality of life so that you can get back to doing the things you love. Getting an accurate diagnosis and targeted treatment can help reduce problems down the road. Thank you for joining us on To Your Health. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred, and we'll see you right back here next week.